Hey there, welcome to Getting It Done North of 7. My name is Roland. Today I'm going to show you how to properly rotate your tires and why. A lot of people will tell you to rotate your tires every time you change your motor oil. Um, you can, but you don't really have to. Right now, like you're going about every 5,000 kilometers. Here in Canada, in the metric system, it's kilometers. So, but every 5,000 kilometers, they want us to change our oil and rotate our tires but you don't really have to do it it's way too soon especially if you're not getting a lot of city driving you're doing a lot of highway driving it all depends on your situation I try to rotate my tires at least four times a year because what happens if you don't rotate your tires your front wheels are always turning they get the most work right they're always you're always moving those tires and they will wear out faster along the edges on the other perimeter of your tire than the other but rear tires will. So you want to change those up. So it's just good for tire wear and everything and it's really important. That is why you want to rotate your tires. Now I'm going to show you how to rotate your tires. And today we're working with a Chevy truck. It's a 2018. It's rear wheel drive. And I'm going to show you the pattern for rotating your tires on a rear wheel drive and then I'm going to show you the pattern for rotating your tires on a front wheel drive. I'm going to show you how to rotate your tires on a rear wheel drive vehicle first. So this is the rear of the truck or the rear of a rear wheel drive vehicle. We're going to move the rear wheels forward on the same side. The front wheels it's going to go crisscross this way and the driver's side wheel at the front will crisscross this way to the passenger side at the rear. Very easy to understand. Front wheel drive, we do the opposite. We're going to move the front wheels to the back. So this will be your rear of the vehicle. So we're going to move the front wheels to the back, straight back. And the back wheels, or the rear wheels, are going to crisscross. Pretty simple, right? Easy pattern to follow. So this is the main tools I'll be working with today. I'm going to have my floor jack. I'm going to have a couple jack stands. And I have some square pieces of wood because I'm out on the pavement. I don't want to put my jack stands directly on the pavement with all the weight on it. Like even though it's November 29th, it's cold, it's not hot. I don't want my pavement to get, uh, my driveway to be ruined by this, the weight of the jacks. We have a couple chocks here to put behind the wheels in case the vehicle decides to move a little bit. And we have our compressor and we have our impact gun. And I'll have to get a socket that matches the wheels. And you don't need that, but if you don't have a, a compressor and a impact gun, you can always use a wrench, a wheel wrench. And that's all we need for now. And There'll probably be another tool which I'll introduce you later. I notice a lot of people don't do this on their videos when they're changing wheels and it just makes your life easier lifting the wheels onto the vehicle, especially with a truck. They're heavy wheels. Okay, so I blocked the back wheels with the wheel chocks. Okay, on this truck here, these are the actual nuts that hold the wheel on. You may have a truck that has a plastic cap with plastic nuts that actually f screw on to your existing wheel lug nuts and you'll have to remove that first now be careful with those all you need is like that star wrench i had or cross wrench and you can just back them off those plastic nuts and take that wheel cover off to expose your actual wheel lug nuts under here and but me i don't have to do that so i realized i have a 22 millimeter lug nut on here so i'll be using the 22 millimeter socket to remove these and also I have a locking one here for theft deterrent. And one thing I might want to add, I'm just going to loosen these off because I don't want to jack the the, the vehicle up yet because I want the, the tire to be touching the ground because if I have it raised too high and I go to undo these, the wheel will turn. Now that's mostly with a cross wrench with the impact gun they'll probably come off anyway but I'll just show you how I'm going to do it just in case you are using a cross wrench 
So again, I'm just going to loosen these six nuts first. Now I'm not going to take them right off. So as you can see, I put the floor jack right at the front part as I possibly could of the frame of the truck. You don't want to jack up your truck on the tie rod ends or any braces or anything like that. You want it directly on the frame. So I put the jack floor jack right on the frame and I'm placing the floor stand, the jack stand I mean, right behind it as far up front as I can. And as you can see that's about as far as forward as I can go. I could have put the floor stand jack on this side over here and put that and that jack stand a little further up but I just, just it, it doesn't matter it's going to work anyway. So now I'll lower the jack and the frame and the truck will sit on top of the jack stand. Now you can see there's a bit of a gap here between the pavement and the tire. That's all I need. You don't have to jack it up really high. And I'm going to go around and do the other side and then I'll jack up the rear end of the vehicle as well. Yeah, so sometimes they get a little bit stuck on there. Well, practically all the time. <laughs> the wheels are stuck on there. So you just give it a take a rubber mallet, give it a whack on the corners. It should break loose. Okay, so these are 20 inch wheels. They're pretty big and heavy to be moving around. So I see a lot of people, they try to pick them up like this and it's just, it's a lot of heavy lifting for nothing. So what I do is I'll grab like a crowbar or a long screwdriver and I'll just pry it under the wheel here. I'll do it on this side so you can see. I just pry it under the wheel here and I lift. See, just like that. I let it, I let this do the lifting. I use leverage. Then you put your lug nuts on to hold it in place. Just start it on a few threads. So I'll get these on and then we'll snug them up. Well, not completely snug, just a, a bit because we can't completely snug it up. If you're using a wheel wrench, this wheel will probably turn on you and you'll have to lower it just slightly to put some pressure on the wheel so it doesn't turn. All right, again, line up your holes here with your studs, which is about right there. Grab your tire iron, crowbar, whatever you have, and just lift this up. Just like that. That way you're not fighting so much with it. Trying to line up your holes and hold this big wheel. That's a trick my father taught me. And I'll never forget it. It's made my life a lot easier. All right, so I just lowered the back of the wheel so that the tires are touching slightly so they don't turn when I tighten up the lugs. And I forgot to mention, I uh, my, my cross wrench didn't work for here. They weren't big enough, so I had to get a 22 millimeter socket, my ratchet. Then I grab this handle off of uh, a bottle jack and I use it just to lengthen this part here to give me leverage. So I also forgot to mention that you want to go in a star pattern, right? When you're tightening these up so that you, you mount this rim flush evenly all the way around, just when you're snugging them up. So they're all snugged up around and I'm going to go do the final check. So that's how to properly rotate your tires and why. I'm all done now. Should be good for a while. Just remember to be safe when you're doing this and use jack stands if you're doing it at home. Just don't forget your safety. So thanks for watching how to properly rotate your tires and we'll catch you on the next video. Thank you again and don't forget to subscribe.